going to do now is a short exercise uh, in how to actually do a stair takeoff in 30 seconds with only one dimension in mind. And that dimension is your floor to floor dimension. Stair work is relatively simple if you can just unclutter your mind and not look at the fact that this is a long triangle, it's got all these cuts on it, there's a handrail up here, there are fittings and other parts that are going to flow with that handrail, and it all looks very, very complicated and intimidating. When in truth, you're looking at nothing more than a triangle, and if you can understand that triangle without the math of a triangle, then you can understand the entire stair, and you can actually do a stair layout and the majority of a takeoff or parts list by knowing nothing more than one dimension. That one dimension is the floor to floor dimension. And it can be rough to rough, it can be finished to finished. It just depends on which level or what point you're looking at the stair. For the sake of this discussion and for the sake of this exercise, we don't have to be precise to the fraction of an inch because we're not going to cut the stringers we're not going to cut any parts or pieces based on these dimensions. We're simply going to look at the stair. We're going to look at those dimensions, what they do for us as far as the number of rise cuts we have in the stair, the number of tread cuts we have in the stair, and what the length of those cuts are. So we're going to take this large triangle and we're going to develop a smaller triangle that we can understand and that will give us all the dimensions we need. And for the most part, it will tell us all the parts we need for the stair. So let's start with a typical stair, a typical 96 inch ceiling, eight foot ceiling, uh, and a rise of about 107 and a half inches. Uh, and this would be, again, floor to floor dimension. It could be rough to rough, finish to finish. Uh, it really doesn't matter because what we're going to do with these dimensions uh, is not based on the flooring material itself. So 107 and a half inches, given that condition, we know that that stair is going to have about 13 and a half, roughly, risers in it. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take this space and we're going to divide it into individual rises that a person can walk on. We're going to put human ergonomics into play here. So we're going to divide this up into the distance a person can walk on. It would tell us that approximately 13.4 rises in that stair would be perfect for a human being. The problem is we can't have 13 on a fraction rises. We have to have a whole number of rises in a stair. So instead of 13.4 rises, we would have 14 rises in that stair. A stair with 14 rises, if it's a straight run stair as this is, is going to have 13 treads. 13 treads is going to tell us that we need 39 balusters. It's going to tell us that we need approximately 16 foot of stringer material, and the stringer is this part of the stair here. This is your support structure for the stair. We're going to have 16 foot of stringer and approximately 16 foot of handrail on our stair. We're going to have 14 of these individual riser boards, and we're going to have 13 treads. Those riser boards are going to have to be approximately seven and a half inches by the width of the stair. Our treads are going to have to be 10 inches plus the nose overhang, and I'll show you that in a second. So we're probably today going to use the most common tread size, which is an 11 and a half inch tread. Now, that's the bulk of your material list right there. The only other things that we normally are going to need would be whatever we're going to do at the beginning of the stair, and we'll talk about uh, starting a stair uh, in another segment and what we're going to do on the top and of course anything that's going to happen on the balcony itself but just given that one dimension these parts that are listed here go a long way towards a complete material list to to build that stair we've done no math except we've started right here how did i achieve 
107 and a half inches would give me 13.4 riser. And the reason I was able to do that is that I know in my triangle here that each individual rise can be no more than seven and three quarter inches tall. The range is actually seven to seven and three quarter inches traditionally. Uh, in all cases, as I've said before, we're not trying to tell you what the code is. We're gonna tell you what common usage is at this point. You may have to make adjustments to any of these dimensions for the particular code in your code area. So we're gonna give you the general guidelines that are used in the field. You're gonna to have to determine if this fits the codes in your area. So you can talk to the builder, if you are the builder, you can talk to the owner, talk to the architect, or talk to your own code enforcement agency, and they can give you the guidelines that apply in the area where the structure is being built. So knowing that we have to have seven to seven and three quarter inches, and knowing that we can't go over that seven and three quarter inch threshold for riser height, you divide 107 and a half by eight inches. That allows you to use whole numbers without dividing by fractions. It takes all the math out of it. It gives us again a fractional number. We get 13.4 rises in that stair, but we're gonna round it up to 14. We can't round it down. If we round down, we're gonna be over our seven and three quarter inch threshold. So if we round it up to the next number. To double check that number, you can take 14 divided back into 107 and a half. And if my memory serves me right, it's about 7.7 inches. So you're right on the threshold. As I said earlier, is that the only stair you can build here? No. Is it the ideal stair? No. Is it the minimum stair? The answer is yes. That's the minimum stair that it would take to fill that spot. It also tells us, and I left this out of, of the first part of this discussion, it tells us how much horizontal space we're gonna to need to put this stair in. So that horizontal space would be 10 inches times the number of treads on the stair, or again, 10 times 13 treads, which is 130 inches. Whenever I'm looking at a set of prints, I always take what the calculated run of the stair and I add 12 inches to that. We have to have room for the nose overhang. We have to have room here to allow a swinging door to pass if the stairway is going to be close to a door. We don't know going in if the contractor is going to leave a lug on the top. So we need to leave extra room, approximately six inches on each end of the stair for the run of the stair to make sure we're not running into an adjacent structure. So in this case, again, a rise of 107 and a half a run of about 142 inches would give us room for the stair.